TV. Halt and Catch Fire I should have talked about last week, but I'm no longer doing this thing where like I need to watch a show at 10 p.m. and then come and do this right after and you know make it into this show. Things have gotten a little bit more laid back. You don't see the green screen, you don't see me doing this at midnight, although it is like it's 11 o'clock, so, you know, it's pretty late. Uh, Halt and Catch Fire, just want to say, totally solid season two end. Um, I really like the relationship between um, Scooter, Scooter McNary, Scooter, God, what's his name? I can't, I can't remember the names of the characters on the show. But Donna, Donna and her husband, who's one of the main characters in the show, um, their relationship this season has really been fantastic to watch. Um, I really like that the show has taken um, Donna, and I, sh I apologize for not knowing the actress's name, but so nice to see a, a housewife on a show like this with, you know, difficult men in the vein of Tony Soprano, Walter White, um, Don Draper, that kind of thing, where the wife isn't just kind of a whiny naysayer. Um, Donna is a strong, smart character who's still very feminine, but has her own goals and wants to be you know, an active member of the different communities she's involved with, uh, mutiny in this case also. The stuff happening at the end of the season when she finds out her husband's been cheating on her. She's also got her own secrets. She had an abortion. Um, dealing with that is, is really interesting in the context of the show. Um, you know, of course her husband doesn't know they're traveling out to California at the end of the season and, you know, there's this moment on the plane when he's trying to like, you know, get them excited about their marriage again and be like, hey, maybe once we're out there we'll have another kid. And it's just, some incredible acting there um, from the actress playing Donna. Uh, she goes to the bathroom to kind of, you know, reconcile that, that sentiment. And in some ways you're not sure at the end of the season how much she's still in love with her husband. Um, he's dying, but he's also, he's also become a little bit of a douche. And so, yeah, how do you, how do you deal with those things? Um, you know, she cares about her career, she cares about her children, she wants to make things with her husband work, but I'm sure there's a limit. Um, so anyway, just congratulations, Halt and Catch Fire. This is a really solid season. Some people are calling it one of the best shows on television now. I mean, I, I'm still putting it at a, a solid four stars out of five. But, um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it. I really hope it gets renewed for season three. Um, yeah, good stuff. Now let's talk about a series finale. The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. This is a show that I have watched every single episode of since I graduated college in 2010. Um, and then, you know, sporadically I watched it throughout college. I watched it quite a bit in college and then, you know, a lot uh, before that as well. I can't remember the first time I watched it. Um, probably some late night Comedy Central might have been on my house. But, man, what a loss. What a loss to have Jon Stewart done with, be done with the show. And I, I think it's a great time to be going out. Some people think The Daily Show has declined in recent years. I think it's been as sharp as ever. Um, obviously, having um, Obama as president isn't as... Uh, Fool, fuel, fool, fool, fuel for fodder, fodder for. It's not, uh, it doesn't lend itself to comedy as much as, say, the Bush years did. Um, but, you know, I, I'd say there's still been plenty of amazing things for them to tackle. Um, I think it's been an incredibly sharp show, incredible writing, incredible delivery by John. Um, and what, what a painful life, by the way, to, you know, he talked a little bit in some interview or something about why he was leaving. And you realize that, like, most of his day is coming into the office watching these terrible things on Fox News or, or any mainstream news channel, the way they're covering some disaster or tragedy or, or anything, and doing such a terrible job at it. And then he has to make light of it, make it funny, um, allow us to, to the rest of us to kind of choke it down while he's the one chewing on it uh, with his writers and incredible staff. Um, and so, you know, we get to laugh with him when the, when the actual show happens, but the rest of the day really seems pretty hellish. Um, all that being said, um, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, this was like a morning coffee thing for me. Like every morning, like at work, it was so great to wake up, get started with whatever project I'm doing, watch the daily show, feel a little bit better. Um, whatever absurdities are going on in the world, it was just really nice to have that as, as a lens to kind of view things through. And if you can, you know, it can be really depressing sometimes, especially with some of the stuff going on um, in America and the rest of the world right now. Uh, it's really easy to get weighed down by some of those things and just feel like there's kind of a, a hopelessness to it all. You know, will corruption always prevail? Will power always crush the weak? Uh, will no one, you know, shelter us through this storm? And um, Jon Stewart always really felt like a light through all that because even if he couldn't fix things, he could at least give us a way to, to view things that 
that made us all feel better. And it was really nice to have him calling people out on their BS sometimes, uh, on being hypocrites. And I, it's, it's, I mean, I'm sure Trevor Noah's gonna do, gonna do a great job. I'm really looking forward to his take on the whole thing. But John was just such a good policing agent uh, because I want to believe that there are a lot of people that I want to believe that there were a lot of dumb things that people would have done if they didn't have in the back of their mind like oh god what if the Daily Show like makes fun of this or something like that maybe that's not true because uh, Lord knows plenty of terrible things happened that uh, you wouldn't think anyone with a rational mind would say that John Stewart is then able to turn around and make very funny um, at their expense but yeah it's uh, it's, it's a really good, um, I want to say, agent of good out there in the world, and it's no longer here. Again, Trevor Noah, I'm sure he'll do a great job, but Jon Stewart just got so good at it over the years, and I'm going to miss it a lot, and, um, you know, even, especially the stuff going on with this upcoming election, I know that I'm going to be constantly wishing that, that he was still around, and, you know, he's going to be off on a farm doing awesome things for animals, animal sanctuary, that's great. But, um, yeah, maybe he'll, maybe he'll comment on a few things. That would be fantastic. And, you know, we're going to have Stephen Colbert. Probably not in his politically charged of a nature, but I'll look forward to seeing him. Um, Larry Wilmore doing The Nightly Show. Um, John Oliver doing Last Week Tonight. It's, there's still... He, he has set the stage and become a precedent for, for so much of this kind of... Um, I don't even know if I want to call it satirical news, because there's, there's a real quality to it now that really fulfills... Um, an intellectual need, a, a rationality for um, taking on the news and, and dissecting it and analyzing it that, that a lot of the 24-hour news networks are not doing. Maybe they don't have time, maybe it's because they're chasing ratings instead of the actual, you know, content that they need to, but um, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm gonna miss this guy. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the finale. So the finale, the beginning was a little bit, a little bit, um, simple? I, I don't know. It was all about the correspondence coming back. It was a big party, that's fine. Um, a lot of the correspondence, of course, I didn't recognize because I wasn't watching the show in the early days. I do know that Craig Kilborn used to host The Daily Show, so it's fun to see someone like him come back. Steve Carell, Ed Helms, um, you know, all these people, Josh Gad, all these people who've gone on to do other things and have very successful careers. Um, kind of like Wet Hot American Summer, thinking about uh, finishing that last week, uh, which was good. And by the way, I'm not going to talk more about it, just, yeah, good good season. Hooray! I, I hope uh, we get to see them do the second day of summer. Anyway, um, when we got to the second segment, or the, the end of the first segment, Stephen Colbert apparently going kind of off book to really thank John for, you know, helping them all out, giving them all a chance, how, you know, he says that he really doesn't know what he'd be doing if not for Jon Stewart. Like, that's the kind of professional relationship that, that really makes me smile. Like, take away all the political sides of, of, of The Daily Show and all that, and just look at Jon Stewart and his staff and, you know, that institution as a launching pad for some really incredible talent. And uh, in a similar vein to Saturday Night Live, I guess you could say, I, although for some reason I care more about the people that have come out of The Daily Show, um, that, that kind of proving ground and area to really, to really do good, because Saturday Night Live, primary goal is to make you laugh, and you might say that's the same goal of The Daily Show, but there's, there's such uh, a vegetables quality to it that's, that's really hard to do, and especially if you watch what SNL does with uh, Weekend Update, which is very hit or miss, especially in the last few years, it's been a lot of miss, you see how well The Daily Show does its job, um, especially with Jon Stewart at the head of it, and yeah, it's just really wonderful to have to have Stephen Colbert there, like really, really letting John know like how much he's meant to everyone. See John tear up, and uh, yeah, to go from that to giving to John having a very, I want to say prepared. I mean, obviously prepared. I'm sure they thought about this a lot. Like, what's the last thing John Stewart's going to talk to the camera about, and have a whole speech about bullshit. And uh, basically telling us all to remain vigilant and be on the lookout for bullshit and try not to be suckered in by empty, empty politicians, empty campaign promises, um, people just looking to make a buck or further their own goals without caring about other people, which is a lot of people these days, unfortunately. So, you know, it's a, it's a strong final message um, delivered with a lot of power and then rung out with Bruce Springsteen, which is cool, and seeing everyone come out and hugging and, uh, you know, having those final moments, it, it was really, really powerful. Um, 
I'm gonna miss the Daily Show a lot. I it's it's kind of fitting, you know, to, to have it ending um, so close to me having a child. Like you could say that there's been the Daily Show for me has always been there's there's a paternal quality to it. There's a, a hand holding a a again lens to view the world through that as I'm about to become a father you could kind of say it's like leaving the nest sort of thing. This is totally me projecting, but it feels like it, if the show's gonna end, it makes sense for it to be at this point in my life. Um, it really helps create a division, I think, between um, my, my pre-adult years and my pre-adult years, pre-child years and my post-child years. Um, yeah, so rest in peace, Jon Stewart's Daily Show. You will be missed, I'm sure. Over the course of my life, I'll be looking back on on this, uh, let's say this decade, this decade, 2005 to 2015, um, where I was really watching it, enjoying it, and pre appreciating it. And um, I'm sure I'll be looking back at these episodes sometimes and uh, just going, man, you didn't know how good you had it watching these episodes. <laughs> uh, really sharp satire. I don't think there'll ever be anyone quite like Jon Stewart. But thank God that he's inspired so many people, and I, I think I genuinely think the world is a better place uh, for him and his show. So um, yeah, The Daily Show, I stars, confidence of five. Hannibal this week, totally solid. Um, the Red Dragon stuff again. I'm, I saw. I was happy to see Alan Sepinwall um, kind of agreed with me with this idea that this is kind of a different Hannibal, and it's it's kind of weird hearing you know the Anthony Hopkins slash. Uh, book version of Hannibal, um, having these lines coming out of Mads Mikkelsen's mouth. Um, you know, like the conversation between uh, Richard Armitage, who is fantastic as the Tooth Fairy, between Richard Armitage and, uh, oh, nice picture for my brother, that's cool. Uh, Richard Armitage is fantastic as the Tooth Fairy, but the conversation between Hannibal and the Tooth Fairy about, you know, demeaning nicknames and all that, like, there's there's a, a kind of a fixation on, on certain things in the book version of Hannibal that I don't think the Mads Mikkelsen, Brian Fuller version of Hannibal should have. And um, anyway, I, I kind of wish they weren't adhering so much to the book with those parts. Everything not related to the book is great. Um, all the stuff related to um, um, Gillian Anderson's character was fantastic in this episode. I love this smile that she's had the whole episode. Like, she knows what's going on. She knows that Hugh Dancy, um, Will Graham knows what's going on. Um, she doesn't care. She's on top of the world. She's going on speaking tours, probably being paid millions of dollars to talk about what it was like to be cast under Hannibal's spell. And, uh, it's really wonderful. So, um, yeah, great to see Gillian Anderson there. Um, I kind of like the ending of this episode, a little little thing that didn't happen in the book. Uh, Will Graham getting a confrontation with the Tooth Fairy in the elevator, you know, a little fight scene. I mean, it's possible that that kind of makes the other confrontation with them less meaningful because now they, they both know what the other one looks like and all that. But, you know, just for the sake of a surprise, that's kind of fun. Um, it was nice to have something canon with the books where I didn't know what was going to happen next. So, that's good stuff. Hannibal, five stars, confidence of five. Just a few episodes left. Oh.